Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mike McKim. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Creative Realities. I'm here with Rick Mills, our CEO. We're the company bringing this product solution to market. And of course, hoping to help the reopening process across the country and getting people back to work, to stores and to venues with confidence that it's safe to do so. Which is the point of this webinar, which will run about 20 minutes. We'll include a demonstration of the thermal temperature inspection device, our thermal mirror, and then a view of the cloud-based software dashboard. After that, we'll open it up for a Q&A. A few quick ground rules before we begin. I will be sharing my screen for the discussion. Your cameras are turned off and everyone is on mute. At the bottom center of your screen, you'll see a Q&A icon for you to submit questions. Questions will be anonymized. We will get through as many questions as possible at the end of the session. We'll read them out loud and we'll answer them for the group. If at any point you need to jump off or you want to come back and re-listen, this session will be recorded and available on demand at CRI.com. With that in mind, let's get started. I'd like to introduce Rick Mills, our CEO. Rick. Thanks, Mike. We also have Darren Taylor with us here. So thanks, folks, for joining us. Um, let's talk about the thermal mirror. Uh, but first, is I want to take just a minute or two and give you a little history on creative realities and our company. So what we do, we help clients use the latest technology to create better customer experiences. And so our background is all about managing all things digital for our customers. Today we manage thousands of devices all across America, like a screen as you see on the picture. It might be a digital signage player. It might be a remote router that's running some technology. So that's really what we do. Um, our constant theme or that we talk about our scale aligns with that of our customers. We're a hundred plus people all across North America. We have five offices throughout the U.S. We have additional people located in different states. We also have an office up in Windsor, Ontario that takes care of our customers up in Canada in the greater Detroit area. Our customers, significant group of quality customers all across America, um, in retail, automotive, uh, some of our largest customers in the automotive sector, one is Chrysler or FCA as it is known. Today our software runs in all 2,300 dealerships across America. Uh, Circle K is a fuel and, fuel and convenience customer through a partnership we have with a networking company called 33 Degrees. Stadium, we have 41 stadium and large venues under contract, tremendous amount of theaters, food and beverage, etc. So as you can see, we're all about scale. So here we, today we're all of us together are trying to find the new normal. What is it? And how do we as employers, I count myself in that group, um, how do we convince our people to come back to the office that it's safe uh, and they can have confidence in coming back? Um, so we're, we have a product called the Thermal Mirror. What is the thermal mirror? What's well, a non-contact fever inspection kiosk? It's built for enterprise and scale. Uh, it's got a thermal camera, the sensor. It's accurate to within nine tenths uh, of a per, of a percent, a one degree Fahrenheit, or 0.9. So it takes about one second. Works with or without a mask has facial recognition software built right in. And we can fig it, get it ready, so when you open it, it works immediately right after the device is powered on. <clears throat> Use cases. 
frankly, we're talking to all kinds of folks all across America because the use cases are many. We are on the phone with manufacturing facilities, uh, stadiums and, and arenas, more for the back office events, schools. Every K through 12 school in America is looking at temperature taking devices. The casinos trying to figure out how they can open back up with Las Vegas beginning to open back up. And so we're in discussions with different casino related properly, properties. How can they use this to get their thousands of employees back in and back to work? So plenty of use cases. We highly recommend that you start and you do a, these three things. Number one, implement checks. Leverage the thermal mirror product to automate the testing and logging of results. That way you don't have to have your people, your employees, or a contractor taking temperature of your employees, which by the way, forces them typically 18 inches away from a, another human being, so therefore you're not respecting social distancing. So number one, implement checks. Number two, communicate what you're doing, how, and why. So we typically recommend a display with the thermal mirror. It's a 50-inch TV display, puts on the wall, and you're communicating all of the different things you're doing today. For example, I suspect you have a different cleaning regimen than you might have had in the past. Do you have a glove policy or not? Do you have a mask policy? or not. I suspect you might have rearranged your offices and the layout. So all of this provides information that people want to know. Number three, also display the results. It creates confidence. You know, uh, we also have a, a printer that can be attached to it and prints out a little sticker. Imagine you're in your office and you're walking around the, the floor and you've got 40, 50 employees and everybody's wearing that sticker that says, hey, I, tasted, I tested A-OK -okay today for temperature. And it's not the individual of each of one of these that's going to help build confidence. It's really holistically doing all of the, all three actions uh, together that are going to help build confidence. We talk about adjacent digital signage is critical. Imagine going into a retail establishment like a, a Starbucks or, or a boutique and they've got a digital sign up there and it says everybody that works in this place, again, tested positive or safe today for a good temperature, again, creates confidence. This is a close-up picture of the technology there are four tech stacks in this, in this device, or what we call stacks of technology. First and foremost, there's nothing in the device that is brand new in terms of a brand new technology. All of this is very much tried and true and reliable technology. What does make it unique is it's the first time these four technologies have been brought together in this form factor and at this price. So let me take a moment and describe the four technologies. The first is a thermal camera, which is on the top of the device. And that's what is used to measure and take your temperature of the forehead from between 20 and 25 inches away. Second tech stack, which is in that, is what they call a uh, stereophonic or bionic camera, which by the way is very much identical to the camera that's in your iPhone or your Android phone today that you've turned on for facial recognition. It's the identical technology. Third tech stack in this device is the actual Android tablet itself. Uh, and as we know, there's only several billion of the Android tablets around, roaming around the planet. The fourth technology stack is the actual Android operating system, version 7.1. Uh, 
Um, and we've highly modified that and customized that to establish the hooks into the operating system to take all the data the device gathers and it uses that to transmit them up to the cloud. So that's what makes all four technologies work well together in this device. There are customizable settings uh, on the device that allows you as an employer to capture any uh, combination of a number of events. You can capture that somebody came through and had their temperature taken. Uh, and did they pass or fail? You can actually capture the actual temperature. You can capture the fact that they had a mask or not, whether they were a known or unknown person. So you capture a number of those things. And our device has notification built in. What that means, Mike McKim here, came, uh, if Mike McKim comes in in the morning, at nine o'clock, has his temperature taken, and Mike has a high fever, 102 temperature, we can set the device to have it automatically send an email or an S, uh, SMS text. Uh, we can have it uh, buzz a guard. We can have it do any number of things. So the device has a tremendous amount of flexibility. It does support networking. So if a building has multiple in, in, uh, entrances throughout the building, uh, and then all the data is aggregated. It all streams from the multiple devices throughout a, uh, a building and it streams up to the cloud. And you can access the data from anywhere. This gives you an idea of kind of what the cloud dashboard looks like. We use this dashboard with a partner company called In Reality, and it's their cloud that we have a uh, adapted for use. Uh, so here's a typical screen that tells you that 90 people have screened, 85 people passed, 5 failed, the temperature of passing, temperature of failing, number of screenings by day, screenings by shift. Really, we can, we, we can gather a tremendous amount of data and display it in whatever fashion that you might want. And I would just point out, our cloud has been up and running for years, and that's with a plural. Today, it manages thousands of devices all across America. A number of our competitors today are telling you about what their cloud is going to do. Our cloud is up and running uh, today. My, this, these are the product specifications, okay? We talked about the 0 .9, 0 .9 uh, degree Fahrenheit for accuracy, which is less than 1% of the human temperature. By the way, 0.9 is what is recommended by the FDA. It does run on 12 volt power, so it comes with a UL approved little power brick that plugs in the wall. And for those of you who choose to power the device via your network, it does run on PoE+. Plus. So you can put a little power injector on it and away you go. Um, our device comes with the uh, A17 quad core controller. Um, other devices come uh, with a processor that's not as powerful. So I would highly recommend you when you're looking around, make sure it's got an A17 quad core. Uh, we talked about the stereo camera. We talked about the thermal imaging. It does have built-in Ethernet and Wi-Fi. So we need to put it on either your network for Ethernet and Wi-Fi, or in many cases, we supply it with uh, a, a small router and put it on a cellular bandwidth of some kind. Um, it is not a medical tool. This is a temperature inspection device, which is what it has been relegated and, and mandated from the FDA. Okay, Mike? 
uh, again, we, we talked a little bit about how it integrates with our cloud-based services. The device creates event logs, stores and forwards them to the cloud. So it's uh, got a full compliance, audit compliance data trail for folks that might need that. Our rules engine is what we do use to activate and have it do something, whether it send an SMS or whether it sends an email. We can integrate this with any number of other venue analytics tools, occupancy sensors, those type of things. We can integrate it with employee time clocks. So you can literally scan in and out as a, and use it as a time clock. We can also integrate it with any number of building physical security systems. It does have a relay built into the device. So when we trigger a positive in terms of somebody passes temperature, they're A-OK, -okay, we can have it unlock a door. This is a picture of a couple of use cases. One is mounted on a counter. That does show it with the actual pole that it comes with, the pole mount. There it is on a turnstile where it's actually activating a gate. So you got a couple of different viewpoints that you can do. You can wall mount it, so we have several mounting options. And this, for those of you who want to know about the cloud and the data security, our cloud runs up in AWS. It uses 256-bit encryption for all the applications, data storage, etc. When the device is communicating and sending the data to the cloud, it's all done through a secure tunnel with authentication. It uses TLS version 1.2. And for those of you who have an IT department that's going to want to know every facet of every detail about it, we have a complete separate document that we can hand out that goes through it in detail. So, the other time I would tell you one other thing, and I think we're going to go to the um, uh, hands-on demo in a moment, right, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay, so while Mike is switching to the demo, I just would tell you a couple of things. Number one, we do have complete financing available should a company want to buy many multiples of these. Number two, lead time and capacity. Many of our competitors have not been in a position to buy the product and get it manufactured in high qu quantities to get it here in the U.S. Today, we have thousands of the devices available. I have a thousand arriving every single week. So, as a matter of fact, in the last couple of days, some other folks who bought some other competitors' hardwares have canceled those orders and place them with CRI because I will be fulfilling those orders. If not today, tomorrow, they will ship out the door. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and he will go to a hands-on demo. There we go. This shows you a little bit of the dashboard, but I'm going to ask Mike to step in and articulate the, the software function. I'll do that in just a second, Rick. I haven't taken my temperature in the last half hour, so I'm going to do a quick temperature check. Normal temperature. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. Um, so thanks, Rick. Absolutely. So one of the things we get asked about is the dashboard. What we have done is we put together some basic metrics that we believe will get people started. So everyone gets this base dashboard <laughs> as the default. The total number of screens. I'm sorry, I'll skip it. You can pick the date that you want to look at. So I'm just looking at the week to date. And I do that by click the beginning. And then I click the end of my period, and I say OK. And so it updates. So we can see we have a very healthy office, thank goodness. We're fortunate here uh, at our corporate office. Everyone coming in is, is passing. You can see the number of people by day who are being screened. Again, screening by days of the week and screening by hour. Just, again, trying to keep, it, keep tabs, metrics that we think that are interesting to people and then if your picture is not in the system, you, you're uh, treated as a visitor. If your picture is in the system, it does the facial rec. If you're able to see it as a past, it flashed my picture up on the screen and knew who I was. 
when I just did my temperature. And so that's the difference on this, on this board between employees and visitors. So again, the idea is to give a very, let people manage their environment and see those statistics. The other area I get a lot of questions about, Rick, is about the devices. What else does the cloud do for me besides this dashboard? Well, it lets you look at the devices that are in your location. So for example, don't worry, this device is actually a test device, so it's not actually offline. We have three devices in our, and we have two uh, buildings in our campus here in Louisville that have three devices, including this one. All three are currently online and functioning and, and taking temperatures and collecting data. So the idea is that we consolidate a number of critical pieces in one location so we can do some analytics, we can do some device management uh, with our customers. And the last piece that we uh, just begun to deploy is compliance reporting. How, who has been checked specifically at a location or how many people are being scanned per day? And so we now have a report that lets us do that. We can easily go in and change the date range that we want to look at. I'll update it to today. We'll see how easy that is. And so June to date, here is a list of everyone who has come through our location. So you can see Tim is an employee because it has his picture and the number of people whose pictures we did not have have passed through. But the idea being on a daily basis we can report on that we are scanning people and maintaining compliance with any local regulations. We've got the device manager, Rick, and then we've got a dashboard that lets us look at some key metrics to help us keep tabs on our environment. Hey Mike, I got a question. If I have multiple buildings, and maybe I have multiple thermal mirrors set up in each building. Can I look at the data by building, certainly by thermal mirror, as you're showing, but I can group it by building, can I not? We can't group by can building. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely, so you have the ability to define your environment. We, we create a layout uh, for you. We attach the devices into that layout, and then you can select different levels uh, for reporting purposes of, of that layout. Typically, people are aggregating that data for the building level, so usually if I'm keeping track of something, it's the entire building, but we can easily work with you to adapt that reporting to match your, your local requirements. So if I have 100 offices across the country and I've got regional managers that manage 10, 20, 30, so I can set it up by region, and then ultimately at headquarters, I can look at the aggregate data across all of my facilities, correct? That, that is correct. All right, thanks. And then the last piece I'll just point out really quickly, uh, Rick, is around the employee management. I'm, I'm only calling on that out because we, we've we worked to improve the model on how we collect employee photographs. And the idea here is that with employee photographs, rather than having to chase people and do things, we create, we import, so if we were starting new today, we would import an employee list, and then we would take advantage of this bold function to um, so that we can send them, wow, hang on one second here. Um, we can send a link that allows employees to load their own photographs. So the idea was to simplify the process, HR, get a list of employees, load them in, just a couple of basic data points that we need, and then we can send email links to employees and say, hey, Rick, can you please load a photograph for me and get a photograph in there? That way, we're not worried about trying to chase people down and simplify the process. It goes to their email. It could, we're working on a text option so that you would get the link. But the idea is that they employ them a couple quick clicks, they get a photograph, it loads up, and ties it into their records. So just so I, we all understand it here clearly, if I've got 100 employees in my building, I literally import a file that's got a hundred of their names and whatever information is appropriate out of the HR system. And then you hit a button and it sends a link to each buddy, to everybody individually. They then capture their own picture and it consolidates all the data and facial recognition is up and working for all those hundred employees, correct? That, that is correct. All right, thanks, great. What else? I, that, that's the basic setup. There is more functionality in there, but that's those are the basics that get everybody started and where typically people are asking those questions up front. So just trying to help assure people up front that this is real, stuff is there, and we're doing this today. And Mike is head of operations from, just one other question I'll ask. From the time that, if I were to place an order with CRI today and that order would 
if an order comes today, it probably hits your operations department tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Typically, how long does it take you to prep the devices and ship them? Approximately two days, just to make sure we, we cover all the points. Uh, uh, some of the orders involve more than one device at a location. So we like to have a little plan as we put that together, but typically two days, it's shipping in two days. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> With that, uh, I think that's the, that completes the demo. Let's go see if we have any Q&A at this time. For those of you who are out there, if you have Q&A, you can submit questions through the Q&A app or the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it looks like at this point in time, there are no Q&A questions. Please feel free, if you think of something, to submit a question to info at CRI.com on the website, and we can certainly get back and answer that question. With that, we'll end the webinar, and thank you all for attending. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.